Hey. Hey guys, what's up? So your girl's getting ready. I'm just putting on a little make a little bit of makeup because I'm gonna have James on to share his story, and I don't want to look too crusty and dusty. But um I am excited. It's gonna be a good time. We're gonna be talking about Suboxone, which y'all know I love talking about Suboxone. Um and yeah, it's gonna be good. He's gonna come share about you know his struggle um, with coming out about being on NAT and the stigma. We're also gonna talk about some controversy that people are talking about in the recovery community. And it's gonna be really fun, you guys. I really think that you should make sure you make the live stream, okay? It's gonna be over on my TikTok. So if you don't have TikTok, and you want to watch it live, you'll need to go get TikTok, okay? Now, if you don't want to watch it live, I will have it uploaded on my YouTube channel tonight, okay? So, if you don't want to watch it live, you can always catch the replay, motherfuckers, okay? Okay, so. One thing about me, I'm the baddest around. All right, so this is a really pretty color. It's got like these pretty like sparkly blues in there. Sparkly blue. Here, I'll show y'all. Oh, I guess you can't really see the sparkles. I can though. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to get... Oh, or this one. No, we'll do this one. Okay, so... um. You know, what we're, we're going to talk about a lot of stigma tonight, and it's unfortunate that we have to deal with this kind of stigma in our own recovery community. You know, a person should never feel like they can't share about being on sub Suboxone. They should never have to be ashamed of that. But it, the fact is that people, people do feel ashamed, and it's because of the stigma created by our own recovery community. It really fucking is. I don't care what nobody says. I know. I know, um, cause I, I've lived it too. And so, um, people, they act like they support MAT, but then when it comes down to it, they don't, you know, a lot of people don't and they, they, they're one way to your face and then they're another way when you turn your back. That's the, t the hard truth about it. Okay. Let's use this pretty purple for the, the inner corner. Um, and that's what we're going to talk about that. Um, and I understand that some people, you know, don't understand MAT, and if that's the case, then let us educate you. Hey, Winter, um, let us educate you. Ask questions, you know? Um, did you guys see the wrap I made you guys? It says, it goes like this. It goes, it, it goes, are you having med problems? I feel bad for you, son. I got 99 problems, but my subs ain't one. <laughs> I made that wrap up today. <laughs> no, like, <laughs> I know a lot of you guys um, have been asking me about the recovery delivered telemedicine thing, and I'm working on the whole insurance situation. A lot of you guys have been asking about when they're going to be approved for insurance, and I'm really, really, really working hard on pushing that. Just so you guys know, like I'm trying, I'm doing everything I can. I know that they have it in process. I just, last time I talked to Marcus, he said 60 days. It was going to take 60 days. Um, but, and he had said something about Medicaid too. So that's good. Yeah. You have a med problems. So I feel bad for you, son. I got 99 problems, but my subs ain't one. And I got them for 50% off. <laughs> hey, Tiffany. Um, hey Charity, hey Taylor, hey Bobby. And so, um, that's what we're going to talk about. I'm really just trying to help people with options that are not, uh, local. Like there's so many people that I know that are rural. They live in rural areas where they can't like drive to the doctor every 30 days or they don't have, uh, transportation. And so, um, the recovery delivered thing is like 
It's really a good thing for people that don't have the means, you know, to get to the doctor every month. You're still getting the same level of care with your medication, okay? You're still getting to see the doctor. You're still getting to your drug tests every month. You just do it through telehealth, okay? Okay. Yeah, what's up? Talk to me. What do you want to talk about, honey? Brianna, what do you want to talk about? Oh, Brianne. Thank you. I appreciate you. Hey, good job, Michael. My pharmacy will not fill it unless they are licensed in the state of Mississippi. Yeah, so that's great because Recovery Delivered uh, actually just hired 20 new uh, providers. And so that's the only way that a doctor can do telehealth is if they are licensed to prescribe now in that state. Now, I'll tell you that this, um, a pharmacist, it, if, it's a, if it's a law, then I don't think that they can do that. But yeah, um, Recovery Delivered is able to prescribe in all 50 states. That's why I keep telling you guys that, and people keep saying this to me, and I nobody's had any issues at all. So if you have a pharmacy and they're giving you a hard time, you need to uh, let us know, but we haven't had any problems. Also, we have, what I'm understanding is that we also have our own pharmacy and pharmacists, so we can actually put your medication in the mail to you. So, isn't that cool? Hey, you ain't gotta worry about it, honey. <laughs> so, it's like legit, really awesome. That's why I keep on telling y'all and talking to y'all about it. It's not because I'm, I get anything out of it. It's literally, I'm not, I'm not getting paid. I'm literally giving you uh, the resource to get money off of your subs. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I promise you, I would never point you in the wrong direction. I just got my friend. My friend is their marketing um, director. And so we are friends. And I asked him if he could get me a 50% off coupon. So that way, um, those of you guys that were struggling to get signed up because it was $99, that you, that you were having problems. Now, I got to call the doctors, uh, to call one of the doctors up there and ask him about Subitext. Um, I'm going to ask him about that because I've never had anybody ask me that. But I don't see why not. I mean, yeah, I really don't see why not because it's the same exact thing. A lot of doctors, for some reason, think that if they don't prescribe, um, if they prescribe anything that's not uh, Suboxone, that it's like bad. But it's the same thing. It, it does the same thing. The naloxone, it has a low bioavailability, and buprenorphine is what keeps you from getting high. My insurance needed a pre-authorization again today, but my doctor didn't get to it, and it's Friday, and I'm not going to be able to get my fentanyl patches today, and it's time to change it today. What can I do without looking to the streets? Um, Ryan, if I were you, I would just keep that patch on, buddy. I would keep that patch on and not take it off until you can get your prescription filled. Try to just make sure that every little bit of medication comes out of it. You know what I'm saying? But I don't really know. You can go to the emergency room since you have a prescription for it New and see if they can help you with it. But I don't know. Um, I really don't know and I don't want to tell you the wrong thing, babe. Yeah. So, <laughs> um... And I don't think they have like an issue. I think the max that they can prescribe you is three a day, 24 milligrams, uh, through the app. And also they're gonna, they're building an app too. So they're gonna have a way that you guys can literally, this is why I like it too. Okay. So the situation that Ryan's having, it's the weekend. He can't get a hold of anybody at his doctor's office because it's the weekend. They're shut. What is he gonna do? You know? Huh. Well, with recovery delivered, you can A, get on the app and reach out to them. They're there. You can message me and I can reach out to Marcus. You, can, you know what I'm saying? Same thing with Dr. B's office. If you, Dr. B and them are closed on the weekend, right? And if one of our patients is in an emergency situation, guess what? They can call me. I can help them and I can get a hold of the doctor. See? 
Um, I don't know if they're open on the weekends, but I'm I'm pretty sure that 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 they are on Saturdays. And then you can at least get in to see the uh, get an appointment set. You know, girl, I'm sick. I have so sick winter. <laughs> Tell my name when you get a hold of your doctor. Yeah, that's what I would do too, Brienne, because. You know, we take it, you take it off and you think, oh, it's all gone, but try to just hopefully also by leaving it on, Ryan, psychologically, that's going to help you too. The minute you take it off, your mind's going to start thinking about withdrawal. So leave it on to trick your mind, okay? Trick your mind into not focusing on um, withdrawal, okay? Oh, let me get some, um, my shoes on, hold on, and then I got to do my mascara. <sighs> Oh, you, you need meds now. Well, Lynn, if I were you, I would get off this live right here. Let me put the link in the chat. Hold on. Hold on, girl. Okay. There you go. I just put the link in the chat. If I were you, I would get off right now, and I would go in the 50% the, the off code is Nicole, N-I-C-O-L-E. Okay? I would go right now and figure it out. See if you can uh, get the medication today, you know, or this evening or whatever. Okay. And so I called them. I called them and I was like, I know my people are um, are are rocking y'all. And he's like, No, only one person. And I was like, That is not true because I have been talking to all my people and I know that they are coming over there. And then he called me today and he goes, Actually, you know what? They told me that in the last 15 days, one person, 15 people, uh, one person a day has come over. And I'm like, I knew it. I knew it because uh, I have been sharing it with my people. You know, it's a really good discount. $50 for your first appointment, dude. That's cheap as fuck. You know? Yeah, let me know how it goes. Just send me a message, okay? Um, and if any of you guys have any, any problems or if you... Uh, want to talk to me about it or you I can show you it just here in a second we can get on the computer and I'll show y'all but if y'all have any questions about it just ask me but other than that um, I also have my new um, excuse me I have my new Instagram subscription if y'all want to join y'all don't have to I hate talking about this kind of stuff because people get their panties in a wad and they act like I don't live stream like 50 hours a week for free all day, every day. But um, Instagram enabled this new feature where your subscribers, they can subscribe for $4 if they want to. And they are able to be added into a group chat, right, for subscribers only. And you're also able to put content out that only your subscribers can see on Instagram, right? Which I thought that was really cool. So, um, last night I was, um, I have one subscriber, so I was making content to welcome that subscriber and to let her know, you know, thank you. And I was also making content to come over here and, and tell people, Hey, if you want to subscribe, come on over and I'm making a, uh, it's going to be a recovery group chat over there. And, um, I was so nervous to post about it. Because, like I said, people act like I'm over here, like, charging them $30 a live stream. You know what I mean? Like, I'm literally just telling you about an option. You know, like, people online, like, I work really hard to do what I do. And it's okay if I get compensated a couple bucks. You know what I'm saying? You know what Facebook did to me? They demonetized my reels over here. So I don't even get paid for uh, my reels on Facebook. So I, everything I do on Facebook is is zero dollars, you know. And so if they're going to give me a way on Instagram to where I can uh, recoup some of my investment, heck yeah, I got a kid, you know. Mm, I got a kid. Visitor. That's my main thing is I have a kid. He's eight years old. He's growing. I got to get him new uh, winter clothes. And so that helps out a lot. But that's what we're going to do on my, uh, on my Instagram. I'm building a recovery a recovery um, group chat on Instagram and what happens is the messages they will just they will uh, disappear every 24 hours so like if you write something that's really personal in the group chat it's not going to be there for like everybody to see you know what I'm saying it's kind of like snapchat um, but I thought that was really cool really cool
Now you're probably going to say, why don't you start a group chat over here? I've done that before and I'm going to tell you why I won't do it again. I'll tell you exactly why. Because people are nasty, mean, haters, fucking assholes. And anytime I try to do something like that, where I just open it up to like everybody, there's always some kind of like troll or something that tries that joins in and takes like our our uh, personal discussions out of the group. And I just don't, I don't know. It's not cool. I don't deal with that. You know? What do you want to learn, Winter? Winter wants to learn something. Hold on, let me see. We need to learn as well. I'd love a little extra coming in. It helps a lot. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm trying to help you guys to also understand that you can uh, make extra money on social media. And did you see what I was talking about yesterday about the Poshmark? You can have your... Now, if you have really nice like clothes and name brand things and shoes that you think you could uh, get rid of and sell on Poshmark... Like, I would totally open up a store, you know? That sounds awesome. I'm going to have to check it out. Can you please leave the link again? I t oh, are you talking about to Instagram? Oh, crap. I don't know my link to Instagram. My Instagram is uh, Discovering Nicole 77 Here, I'll put it. But it's cool. It's, it's just, like I said, it's just a way... Uh, and what we're going to be doing on Instagram is, oh, I go live so much, you guys. On Instagram, for subscribers, we're going to be going live at the beginning of the month. Every month, we're going to have two live streams for subscribers only on Instagram. And it's going to be at the beginning of the month and the end of the month, okay? So first Sunday and last Sunday of every month on Instagram. We're going to go live. We're going to talk about recovery, what we're working on this, uh, this month, October, is forgiveness okay we are working on forgiveness forgiveness of who our damn selves motherfuckers that's who we're going to be uh talking about forgiving how many of y'all are struggling with that i struggle a lot um oh how to do tiktok and stuff it's not hard you guys at all all you got to do is start posting okay you just got to start okay you got to start somewhere start posting sharing your story 30 to 60 second videos, short and sweet, you know. So that's what we're going to be talking about for the month of October. The month of October on my uh, on my Instagram subscriptions is forgiveness. That's what we're talking about. And so does that mean I'm going to be teaching you all about how to forgive yourself? No, we're going to be learning together, okay? So like I'm not trying to... I want people to understand, like, I'm not a, a teacher. I'm not a guru. I'm not somebody who knows more than you. I'm, I, I am on the same. We're, the, we're equal, okay? We're equal. And so we're going to help each other learn how to, to heal and learn how to forgive ourselves, okay? And so I, I, it's really important. I want really important that people understand that I am not trying to come across as a know-it-all guru person that I am here to support you guys and we're going to learn together, okay? So that means I'm going to be finding content, okay, that we can watch together, content that we can read together, that we can work through together. That's going to be about forgiveness. Do um, you understand what I'm saying? So, like, I'll probably have a, some videos where I, I read some stuff. And the videos are going to be for subscribers only on Instagram, so y'all will be able to see them. Do you know what I'm saying? And then y'all will also be able to comment so nobody can see your comments. I thought that was really cool. So anyway, that's that. That's that's the subscriber thing. I'm not going to talk about it no more. If you want to join my TikTok, my um, Instagram is Discovering Nicole 77 Super easy to find me, Discovering Nicole. So <clears throat> now let's talk about TikTok. TikTok tonight. 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. So in about an hour, I think, we're going to go live on my platform with James from um, James Life is Good. Okay, James has been sober, I think, about two years, maybe a little bit longer. And ever since he's been on um, TikTok, he has uh, never told anybody that it was on Suboxone, okay? Which nobody ever asked him, but he just didn't say anything about it, which is totally his prerogative, his choice. 
he doesn't have to tell anybody, right? Well, just recently he went to a thing called the grind, okay? And at the grind, uh, he brought just enough medicine to get him through um, the, uh, the, the thing, right? Well, he ran out. I think he like ran out and needed one extra sub. And so he um, asked one of his friends, hey man, do you have an extra sub uh, that I can get from you? I am out right now. And I left mine at, at my house because I didn't want to bring them because I didn't want them to get stolen. Because that, ha that happens. When a bunch of drug addicts get together, shit's gonna go down, right? Is this dried out? I'm gonna be so upset if it is. Kinda, yeah. And so he asked his friend if he could get one of his subs. And so his friend was like, sure, no big deal, right? We're friends, right? And so what happened was when they came back from the grind, somebody fucking started the rumor up, right? Which is fucked up. Anybody that's on Suboxone, tell me you've never, ever accidentally overtaken your medicine. Tell me you've never, ever... Um, maybe misplaced it, tell me you've never, ever, um, ever messed up when you were on subs. Tell me, okay? Because um, we've all made mistakes. This makes me so mad, dude. It's all dried out. Let me see if the other ones are. That fucking pissed me off, you know? And so, um... Now they're all like trying to talk shit about him. So I'm gonna have him on and we're gonna talk about it. Look at that. That makes me so mad. Do you know how much money these are? These fucking uh, glitter pots. They're not cheap, dude. But I can't use it if it's all dried out like that. Well, scooped it out. No, it's like a gel kind of base thing that's supposed to go on my eye. So if I put water in it, then it's gonna be you know, useless, but I'm going to clean this little thingy out. Um, but anybody that's ever been prescribed Suboxone, when we, especially when we first got on it, we, I, if you didn't struggle, then you're perfect. Cause I did, I struggled with overtaking my medication and I've been on it for seven years. So this happened seven years ago. Okay. But I struggled with that. I struggled with, um, wanting to sell extras of it because I could get $20 a piece for it, okay? Because that is your, our old addiction, right? And I know in recovery that my old behaviors can lead me back down to uh, my addiction, right? It can cause relapse. But I had to go through all those experiences and learn to not do those things, right? And talk to my sponsor and be honest about it. And now I'm at where I'm at today, you know? And so I think it's so funny how people forget where they came from with MAT or any kind of recovery. Like, you know, we're not perfect and we're gonna make mistakes. And if you're honest and you come clean about it, I think that's all that should matter. Okay, cool. Now we can put stuff in there. So I'm really upset about that, you guys. Pootie tang. And I'm gonna put this thing over that to keep that dry. Um, okay, yeah, this one's super moist, so that's good. I'm terminally ill with lupus, and I have many. Uh, I've had it six months to live. Yeah, finding peace. That's hard. That's forgiveness, right? That's the same thing I struggle with is, is um, forgiving myself for the things that happened whenever I was in my active addiction with my son when I was pregnant. So I understand. I understand. But here's the thing. With you being on borrowed time, right, <laughs> um, I try to remind yourself that like you, you want to be able to spend as much time as you can with your children in the present. And that's what, I, that's what I would focus on if I were you. I would tell myself over and over again, I'm staying in the now. I'm staying in the now. I'm not living in the past, you know? Yeah, especially at the beginning. They, thank you, Tamika, for saying that. Um, and that's what I'm trying to kind of like help people to understand and see. And I know that mo most of you guys 
understand and see that. But there's some people who are really like spreading rumors about this guy and just being downright nasty. So it's going down tonight on my live stream. Okay, so all these are moist because I didn't remove the little top thingy. So that's good. Um, stay in the present. Keep reminding yourself that. I got to stay in the now. I got to stay in the now. Um, because that's what your babies are going to remember. Your babies are going to remember the time that they got to spend with you now. Okay. Um, what else you got for me? I know that y'all wanted, somebody was asking me questions about something and I missed it. And I'm sorry, I'm sniffling, I'm sick. Oh, Lynn, are you talking about for your Suboxone tomorrow? You need medicine for Suboxone? So here's the great thing about Suboxone, okay? If today you took it, you should be able to be okay till Monday. You shouldn't go through withdrawal, um, at least until two and a half, three days in. Um, now, if you're obsessing over it and thinking about it, then yeah, you're not going to feel good. And that's what I see happen to a lot of people is they get nervous and they start overly thinking about it. Um, so if you can, just try to like hang tight, try to just relax, let it be. Um, and then you see your do you see your doctor on Monday, right? Or is it because they're refusing to fill it at the pharmacy? Is that what the problem is, Lynn? Okay, y'all. Now I'm going to show y'all what's up. What do we think? Can't really see, but I can. <laughs> um, I used to get really nervous too when I would run out of my medication a little bit early. But what I learned is that, especially whenever I tapered off, is that I my withdrawal didn't really even start until about day four, day three and a half, day four. And that's when I got started getting sick. And so really try not to focus on it, okay? Because I don't know another way to get you medication you quick. You know what I mean? Quicker than what I can. Staying in the present, though. That's what you got to do. It's hard. So this is color is super pretty. So we're, I'm going to keep showing y'all so that way y'all can see. I'm going to build it up a little bit. It's like a gel... Uh, glitter is super duper pretty here I'll show you a swap like it's flakes how do I how do I explain this here we go this is how I explain it okay that's how I explain it <laughs> um, don't beat yourself up try to focus on like I said spending time with your family mm -hmm. try not to focus on feeling ill um, psychologically we can put ourselves into withdrawal how many of you guys have done that I know I have I have put myself into withdrawal before because I knew I didn't have any drugs for the next day and so I got super duper hyper focused on it and I could not stop thinking about how sick I was gonna be the next day and so I went I got myself sick I went into withdrawal quicker than I normally would have because of that. Hey, Heather. Wow, that's really pretty. Yeah, so it, that's, that's um, I think a lot of withdrawal is, is a lot of it is psychological. So if we can like say, stay focused on knowing that we're gonna be okay, um, you can get through a lot of it. Now, I, I don't believe it's completely that way. I, I know I, ha I had withdrawals like around the fourth day, um, but they were a lot more manageable when I, like I said, when I focused on breathing and all that good stuff. So, yeah, yeah, totally. Hey, Garrick, what's up? That's how I was too, girl. Okay, so now I want to do... Okay, I'm having so much fun with these glitters. <laughs> I'm such a nerd. This is like a deeper purple. Okay. Um... Okay. 
right, there we go. So, yes, yes, yes. Hey, Ro, what's up, girl? I haven't seen you in a while. Hope you're doing okay. So, um, oh, I know what I want to talk to y'all about. So, what kind of videos y'all want me to start making on Reels? Like, I feel like I've made so many different videos, and I'm kind of running out of ideas. Today, I put up some pretty emotional ones about being a mom, you know, and having kids when we're in active addiction. And I know you guys probably saw those videos. I was crying in most of them because, um, you know, the guilt and shame that I feel still to this day. But I would really uh, like to make content that you guys can enjoy. So if you have anything, um, ideas that you would like me to make. Thanks, Tiffany. We're having a good time, girl, playing with makeup. Okay, so there's that. <clears throat> okay. One thing about me, I'm the finest around. Okay, okay. So then I'm going to show you these other glitters that I really, really like that I use all the time, no matter what. Yes, Bobby. Yes, that one. That, I was crying my eyes out this morning. And so what I do is I wake up in the morning and I go online and I look for videos that I can uh, share that have a like an impact on me. Now, I love making my own content, but recently I've really been uh, enjoying finding and reacting to content like that. And I want to start making like reaction videos where I talk, make uh, YouTube videos and we have like live discussions about it. So like I want to do a live discussion about um, Dahmer. So I'm gonna, I'll go ahead and ask you guys. Do you guys believe that um, Jeffrey Dahmer was an alcoholic? And I'll tell you my opinion, okay? So I believe that Jeffrey Dahmer was definitely, definitely struggled with binge drinking. Okay, I believe that he used alcohol as like a social lubricant because he was so, um, so awkward and socially awkward. I believe that, but I believe that he never lost the power of control when drinking. I believe that he could stop and start when he wanted to. And I feel like he, like I said, he used alcohol to his advantage to lubricate the situation oh honey i'm looking like a glitter a glitter girl okay those are this is the urban decay grind glitter eyeliner okay okay so that's it we're done no more glitter nicole you're starting to look like a prostitute over here <laughs> just playing um so i made a video about it today on uh tiktok and I really am looking forward to seeing what the comments are on it because I know a lot of people are going to be like, you know, having an opinion. And that's what I like to do. I like to get into like discuss it, discussions with you guys about topics like that. So what do you think? Do you think he was an alcoholic or do you think um, he was a binge drinker or what? And like I said, the reason why I believe that he was a binge drinker is because he... Um, I don't feel like he ever lost the power of choice in drinking. I feel like he knew exactly what he was doing. He knew he could stop when he wanted to stop. Now, I feel like his dad, because his dad was afraid, because he knew, his dad deep down in his heart knew that his son was doing some foul ass shit, okay? He deep down in his heart knew that Jeffrey was murdering people and had fucking dead bodies and shit. Like, when he ever, he told him to get the box out of his closet and that he better not have, like, pornos in there. And Jeff was, like, scared to get in the box, you know, because he had a fucking human head. Like, I haven't used these in forever, too. These are fucking cream eyeshadows, you guys, and they're so good. Danessa Myricks. Um, but he had a human head. In this box in a jar with water okay um, it's on Netflix Netflix okay and uh his dad was like get it out because he thought there was pornos in there his dad thought there was pornos but it was really a human head well he went down to get something to open it and Jeffrey new visitor got the head out and hit it 
in the um, hit it in the uh, closet. Okay, huh. barely escaped getting caught with a human head by his dad. Okay, so I believe that his dad knew something was going on. He didn't know that he was killing people, but he knew that something wasn't right. Well, he just didn't want to accept it. You know? Okay. Okay, now we're going to get my favorite uh, lipstick. I'll show you all my favorite color, my favorite lipstick shade, okay? One thing about me is I'm... It, you know what my favorite lipstick shade is? I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. Where did it go? Hold up. favorite freaking uh, lipstick, dude. I know I wouldn't get rid of it. Oh, hell no. Maybe I did something with it. I just don't remember. Oh, well. Uh, my favorite lipstick shade is uh, Pillow Talk by Charlotte Tilbury, but I can't find it, so we're going to use this lip gloss. Y'all, I'm so fine. <laughs> y'all, I'm just playing, okay? Do not take me seriously. Okay, let's go look at what I was going to show y'all. Okay, now you can see, like, underneath the light. Damn! That's a pretty color eyeshadow. Ugh, I can't be looking like a scrub on my damn channel. Okay, what time is it? 7.15, okay. We're going live at 8, so we got 45 minutes, y'all. Oh, that's the purple is the mattes are just a bunch of single eyeshadows by Davina Cosmetics. Um, and the uh, glitters are uh, Danessa Myrick's Beauty. Um, and then the r shadow that's underneath it is Cleona Cosmetics. Okay, so like these textured ones that you see these like chunks, those are the Danessa Myrick's ones. Okay, which that chunk right there, I'm about to take it off because it's driving me insane. Okay, I'll show y'all. Okay, uh, but all the other ones, there it goes. Yeah, oh, did it go right there? Yeah, okay, but they'll stay. I was just picking that off. Okay, there we go. Um, if you go to DanessaMyricksBeauty.com, she is a black makeup um, brand owner. She's amazing. Black-owned beauty brand. Um, and she has these beautiful, like, glitter cream eyeshadows that I was just using now, that pot. And then um, the other cream tube eyeshadows that I was showing you guys. And then the powder eyeshadow is the Cleona Cosmetics eyeshadow. But let's talk about what y'all got going on okay so like I was saying about um, Dahmer I think he had binge drinking what about you guys oh and I'm gonna show y'all who's gonna come tell their story tonight y'all want to see okay Got my spectacles they're dirty though okay well he's not gonna tell his story what we're gonna be talking about is we're gonna be talking about the struggle that we go through as people that are on medication assisted treatment, the struggle and the tug of war that we experience because of the overwhelming um, abstinence based 12 step um, majority of people in the recovery community, right? And because like that program and that way of recovery is what a lot of people do, um, people that are on MAT don't feel like we can talk about our recovery. And we also feel like shamed by people that are abstinent because a lot of people that are abstinent do shame people that are on MAT. So it sucks, but it's the truth, you know? And so, um, 
this guy James, he just recently um, came out about being on Suboxone. And when I saw his video, I'll show y'all the video, okay? So get ready. Sorry. And if y'all don't know, I am like, basically, I believe, y'all tell me, I don't know. I believe that if, if you're going to talk to anybody about being on MAT, you want to go to the top, the top person that talks about MAT. And I mean, besides Dr. B, um, I think that would be me. <laughs> we're going to have him on. And I'm not saying that to be like, oh, I'm the top. I'm just saying that as in like, I have been advocating and talking openly about being on MAT since 2015, 2016 online. And so it's really important to me to have a community of people that know that they can come. They don't have to be worried about being judged. They don't have to worry about any of that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so I'll tell you what the difference is. The difference between methadone and suboxone is methadone is a, is a full opioid agonist and suboxone is a partial. Um, that's the difference. Methadone is um, used, you know, they dose it in liquid form a lot of the times and you have to like work your way up to maintaining your take homes. They do have it in pill form and wafer form too. Um, Suboxone, <clears throat> and what I mean by like, so I'll, I'll explain that to you. Hold on, you probably don't know what I'm what I mean, okay? But first, I want to show y'all this video, and then I'll I'll show y'all. Okay, here we go. Are y'all ready? It's a stigmatism on it. Oh, to be honest, did I just end the? Are y'all still there? Okay, good. I'm gonna give you a I thought I I thought I ended this live. What kind of insulin? Okay. Your okay. What kind of medicine? One thing I notice about us recovering addicts is right. depression through. It'll get you. Uh, where's it at? You can. What? Th I've had a hard time coming out about this just because the stigmatism on it. The stigma. The stigma is what he honest, meant. I let you guys in on every aspect and everything I do. So hear me out for one minute. I'm gonna give you a really good perspective. What kind of insulin do you take for your diabetes? What kind of medication are you on to help with your depression? What meds are you taking to help you get through those anxiety attacks? See, my point is, honestly, I really don't care because you're doing well, right? And it's working for you. The same should go for people on that. I'm on that, right? And I don't tell a lot of people about it because the stigmatism comes in, so I've had a hard time coming out about it. But honestly, it shouldn't matter. I do my recovery. I'm working the steps. I'm doing the next right thing. I'm holding my job there. I'm getting my children back in my life. I'm going about my business every single day doing the next right thing. You gotta knock that stigma too. Okay. So one thing I notice about us recovering at I want y'all to I wanna keep on showing y'all this. So I have been battling. Oh. You're a weird motherfucker. Okay, so he came out and shared about being on MAT. And which was fine, like a lot, everybody was congratulating him, right? Congratulations, we're proud of you. Well, then you know, people had to try and like make it like it's a bad thing because of a situation. And this is where I don't like the recovery community on TikTok, and this is why I don't uh, go to these things that they do online. So a bunch of them went to this thing called the grind, okay? Um, they went to this thing called the grind, and James has prescribed Suboxone, all right? Well, at the grind, he didn't bring his whole prescription, and I wouldn't either because it has been known for people to get their shit stolen at the at conventions and stuff. So he only brought like four of them, four subs, right? And he thought that would be enough to get him through the weekend, right? Well, he he ran short. He needed another one, and he had a friend that was there with him that he knew was prescribed Suboxone, and so he asked his friend if he could front him one until he he, you know, he got back and he could give him, pay him back for it, which any good friend would do that, right? We know we're not supposed to, but we're all human, and any good friend would help their friend out, right? Well, that's what happened, and some people came back from the grind and started spreading it all over TikTok, 
And so because he didn't want people telling everybody he was on MAT without him being able to say it first, he went ahead and said, came out about being on MAT. And what people are saying is, oh, he didn't come out about it because he uh, wanted to share. He came out about it because he's got caught. It doesn't matter. Like anybody would want to get ahead of something like that and be able to tell their own truth. Okay. It doesn't matter if, and it's not getting caught. It's not getting caught. He wasn't trying to hide the fact that he asked his friend that he trusted to front him a sub right? It's not about getting caught. Like he, it, he, he, people asked him at, at, at the grind, are you on MAT? And he's like, yeah, when people asked him about it, he would let them know, but he didn't openly speak about it like I do on my platform. Right. And so on TikTok, it's so crazy to me. People are like trying to make it this negative, horrible thing. This is exactly why people don't share about being on subs, <laughs> this exact reason. And so what, what the problem is, is like, he doesn't owe anybody an explanation of whether or not he's on Suboxone or not. That's a privilege for him to share that with his audience if he wants to, okay? To let them in on that part of his recovery because that is between him and his doctor and his and God, his higher power. And that's it. That's it. It doesn't matter. It's not anybody else's business. And so um, people are snaky and they were trying to come... Um, come back and like make rumors up about him. And so he went ahead and, and he got ahead of it and let people know, Hey, I am on subs, you know? And so tonight he's going to come on my account and he's going to talk about asking the dude for a sub. Mm -hmm. He's going to talk about buying Suboxone off the street. He's going to talk about how he got his prescription finally, because didn't we all start out like that? How did a, a lot of us started out on subs because we heard through word of mouth or from buying them on the street. Okay, so why are we going to, like, I know my map people are not going to shame him. I know y'all are. I know my map people are totally understand because we've all been there, right? But there's people who are, like, trying to shame him. You know what I mean? I think that's fucked up. Okay, anyway, so that's tonight. That's, like, in 30 minutes. Now I want to look up. <sighs> I want to explain something to you about Suboxone and Methadone. Now, I'll tell you this. Personally... Um, Suboxone to me is just, um, to me, it's safer for me because with methadone, I could always take more and, uh, like get fucked up. You know what I mean? Okay. Below are some differences between methadone and Suboxone. The abuse potential. Methadone is considered to have a higher potential for abuse, whereas Suboxone has a lower abuse potential due to its built-in sealing effect. Okay. Um, I'm going to show y'all a little um, thing right here with the differences, okay? Methadone is an opioid medication that is used for opioid maintenance therapy. <clears throat> Suboxone is the trade name of the, of the drug containing the combination of buprenorphine and naloxone. Uh, this is the combination, contains a combination of this, da, 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 um, an important drug that is used to treat people with opioid dependence and also a painkiller. An important drug that we can use to treat opioid use disorder, but not useful as a painkiller. Now, some people will argue this because there's some doctors who try to prescribe it for chronic pain, but Suboxone is not indicated to treat pain. Okay, just so y'all know. Um, now, they have created like buprenorphine uh, patches. I think it's called Butrans that they're trying to like market for pain. But I don't know how it's working out. I don't know if it's doing any good. Um, here's some side effects. Oh, I wanted to share more about the uh, difference in the uh, full agonist and all that kind of stuff. So let's see if it, we can find something that talks about that more. Um, I like these little charts that you guys can see, you know. Um, safer and less addictive, alternative to methadone. Um, uh, can, and I'm not down in methadone, you guys, this at all. Like I support you if you're on methadone for me, it was just, like I said, I had, I abused it. It was easier for me to abuse. And that's, I think a lot of people have had that experience. Um, but if it's safe for you, I, I to totally appreciate, uh, totally support it. Absolutely. I would never, ever, ever shame somebody. And I actually, tell people when they reach out to me and they ask me what different forms of mat they are. I always share about methadone. 
Okay, it was originally developed in Germany during the 1930s as a synth synthetic alternative to opium. Okay, post-World War II, the United States obtained all research records for the substance <laughs> and, and that it was less sedating and less of a respiratory depressant than morphine. In 1947, methadone was approved by the FDA, FDA for the treatment of opioid dependence. Methadone was considered a form of opioid replacement therapy and was used to help patients transition off of more addictive opioids like heroin. Eventually, methadone clinics began sprouting throughout the United States, offering treatment to those with opioid dependence. Unfortunately, most individuals ended up becoming nearly as dependent upon the methadone as illicit drugs like heroin. So this is kind of a negative point of view, for this, the way they wrote this. But, I mean, you're going to become dependent, okay? Like, I'm dependent on my Suboxone, all right? But I do know that back then, a lot of people were having a bad taste in their mouth about MAT methadone because there was like a slew of people that were getting on methadone, smoking crack and doing Xanax. And so um, you would see people coming into the meetings and just all like nodding out and stuff. And it started like a bad, you know, a bad publicity, you know, and then people started overdosing from combining their methadone with their Xanax. It was just a hot mess. Bottom line is, like, if you're ready to get sober and methadone and you get on methadone and it helps you, it's all down to that. It's down to what, how you, if you're ready to change your life and how, how you work with the medication. So, like, I was ready to change my life when I got on Suboxone, right? And Suboxone did well with my, with my body. So, <clears throat> So, you know what I'm saying? Um, me and my two daughters share when we run short for the month. Yeah, and, and you know, like, I don't want you guys to think that I'm trying to teach you guys to do bad habits and stuff. I just want people to understand, like, we're human. And these things go on um, amongst us people who are on medications, you know? And so, I think it's like this higher than thou, holier than thou, like, attitude that people have, like, you're a liar if you say that you've never, you know, done some, something like this, especially if you, um, you know, just started out on MAT. It happens to everybody. Okay. So for a long time, methadone was considered the premium opioid replacement therapy. Eventually, Reckitt Benskinser Pharmaceuticals developed the drug Suboxone, a partial opioid agonist as a competitor to methadone. Suboxone hit the market in 2002 and is regarded as similar in efficiency to methadone, but favorable in that it has a reduced potential for abuse. Um, so... Okay, so, yeah, the difference is synthetic opioid full agonist methadone, synthetic opioid partial agonist suboxone. Um, methadone comes in oral concentrate, oral solutions, tablets, um, dropper. Um, suboxone comes in sublingual film, sublingual tablet, um, uh, buccal film that goes on your cheek, and now they have uh, the patches for butrans. Um, dosages, it says 30 mils of 10 milligram ml or MGs ml. Sublingual film is, they have 2 milligram films, 4 milligram films, 8 milligram films, or 12 milligram films. Okay? Okay. Um, hmm. Function as long, okay, so mechanism of action. Yeah, their pain patch is called Butrans. <clears throat> they're they're more for chronic pain um that for people some pain pa some pain clinics are trying to get their chronic pain patients off of opiate medications because they don't want to prescribe them anymore just point blank period and so they're trying to get them to take uh buprenorphine butrans in a patch which i mean if you have chronic pain i don't recommend you getting on any kind of buprenorphine product because once you do, then you're never going to be able to get on anything else that's going to be an opiate. Um, 
mechanism, I wanted to braid my hair, Me mechanism of action, okay? For methadone, it functions as long-acting full mu opioid agonist and MD NMDA glutamate receptor agonist. It exhibits a mechanism of action similar to morphine such that it may mimic endogen endogenous opioids and endorphins. This triggers the release of neurotransmitters such as acetate line, norepinephrine, sub substance P, and dopamine. Then Suboxone says that it is non-selective mixed agonist antagonist opioid receptor modulator, partial agonist at the mu receptor, antagonist at the kappa receptor, antagonist at the delta receptor, exhibits high affinity for the sigma receptor and a min minimal affinity to the nociceptin receptor. Buprenorphine also inhibits voltage-gated sodium channels. The naloxone component of Suboxone has a high affinity for the mu receptor as a competitive antagonist. It also elicits antagonist effects upon the kappa and delta receptors. So it's totally different than totally different than methadone. So when they're what they're talking about is like um, buprenorphine getting on that the receptor in your brain that other opioids want to go to to get you to fill that drug, right? So buprenorphine, Suboxone, occupies that receptor. That's why when we try to go out and use heroin or uh, pain pills, we can't get fucked up on them when we're on subs, right? Um, now, as far as, like, fentanyl and these new analogs of fentanyl, that's a whole other story, and you can damn kill yourself, so I don't recommend it. But um, that's the difference. I hope that helped out a little bit. So I want to talk about the ceiling effect. It says, Suboxone was designed to have a ceiling effect to prevent users from abusing the drug. This means that past a certain dose, a user will not be able to, to obtain any additional effect, euphoria, high, whatever you want to call it. And this is what is so important that I don't think people understand. Once you get on to Suboxone and you have been prescribed it for seven days or more, okay, the medication ceilings in your brain. It, it reaches the ceiling effect, okay? Oh, you see that fucking fly, y'all? <laughs> um, it reaches the ceiling effect in your brain. So you can take one sub, you can take two subs, you can take three subs, you can take four subs, and it's not going to get you fucked up. Okay, that is the big difference for me with subs and methadone. With methadone, I could take 50 milligrams of methadone and then take 50 more milligrams and 50 and just keep on taking more. And I would get more and more and more and more and more fucked up until I overdosed myself, basically, which I would I would do quite a bit because methadone and me were like, I loved methadone. When I met my husband, he was actually seeing a pill doctor, a script doctor, and the script doctor wrote him a prescription for 365 methadone, 10 pills every month. 365 pills, okay? That's 10 pills a day for, for 30 days, right? Yeah, 10 or 11, something like that. And so I would take like seven or eight of them a day or even more than that. And I would just take more and more and more and more. And then I would add Xanax on top of it. Okay. So that is why Suboxone is used a lot more now, you guys. Okay. Because Suboxone has that ceiling effect. Suboxone is only a partial opioid agonist, meaning it's high, isn't considered as potent as that of methadone, which leads to reduced potential for abuse. By comparison, Suboxone is classified as a scheduled three controlled substance. Under this classification, it is thought to have a lower potential of abuse than scheduled two substances methadone. Okay, okay, that's so that ceiling effect is like really important, and a lot of people don't understand that. And, and especially people that first get on subs, they like want to take a whole bunch of it because they think, oh wow, I'm going to be able to change the way I feel. And it might work for you like the first couple days that you're prescribed it, but after that, honey, you ain't going nowhere. <laughs> So basically, if you're on eight milligrams, 
I'll tell you this. Once you start getting underneath the like six to four milligrams, that's when I could tell. But yeah, when I was on eight milligrams, I could only, I could take half and I was fine for the whole day. Now, some people will tell you different. And I, and I, what I believe this, the reason why they do is because some people, like I told you guys about psychological uh, withdrawal, a lot of people will tell me, Nicole, no, I need to take 32 milligrams a day, four sub strips a day, which is four eight milligram strips, which I'm not dose shaming anybody. I'm just sharing a story with y'all. And which I know people that take that many or, um, sub strips and it's prescribed to them. And they say, no, Nicole, I need to take four eight milligram strips a day. And what I think what they mean when they say they need to, I think what a lot of people uh, get stuck in the rut of doing with Suboxone is using it as like a craving uh, ender, right? So let's say you took your Suboxone at 8 o'clock in the morning that day, 8 a.m., okay? And you're walking down the street at like 12 or you're at work and all of a sudden you start getting these horrible cravings, right? Cravings to use drugs. And so instead of like thinking, calling your sponsor, instead of working on your coping skills, instead of um, snitching on your addiction, you get in your pocket and you grab your Suboxone strip and you take eight milligrams, right? And so I think that's what a lot of people get in the habit of doing is using it as something that like, hey, I can take this and this is going to help me, right? Um, when actuality, like the medication is there to be a supportive service to us, but what we should be doing is working on our tools, and using our tools to fight and cope with life on life's terms. Not dose of Suboxone every single day, every single time we have um, a trigger or a thought. You know what I mean? Hey, Ryan. Um, in California, she gets three a day. How do they decide how many you get? Also, my daughter took four a day and failed her. Um Huh, that's not right. She shouldn't have failed for Oxy. So you might want to have her get another test because that shouldn't have happened. But how do they decide? So I'll tell you what Dr. B does, okay? So like when a patient comes in and we um, we induct them, what, what he does is he uses that clinical opiate withdrawal scale, okay? He also assesses the patient, finds out what their normal um, daily amount of use was. Um, what their route of administration administration was, how long they have been taking uh, opiates, how long, you know, and all that goes into um, the, in consideration on what dose a person is going to take. Now, I'll tell you this right now. I I help people. That's what I do is I am the cheerleader for you when you're going with through withdrawal. If you decide to get on Suboxone um, with Dr. B, then you, I'll have your phone number and I'll call you. And while you're sick, I'll be cheering you on and helping you get over the hump so you can finally get dosed on your Suboxone. And I'll tell you this. I always tell everybody when they're taking their medication, you can always take more. You cannot take less. Thank you. Thank you. So I know you want to get better. I know you want to feel better automatically, right? But don't, don't do that. Wait. Okay. We're in full withdrawal. Dr. B gave us the go ahead to dose our medication. And, and this is just my personal opinion. And what I see has helped people is I say, take your sub strip, break it in half and take two milligrams, dose it, wait 30 minutes, see how you're feeling, make sure you're not, you know, going into precipitated withdrawal just in case, and then you can dose your other two milligrams, and do that every 30 minutes until you reach the point where you are getting relief from your withdrawal. Do you know what I'm saying? Because you can always... You can always add more, but let's say um, when you come in and you tell us about how bad your use was, because we all know that when we come in to see the doctor, a lot of the times, because we're fucked up, we'll over-exaggerate and we'll say, man, I was shooting like two pounds of fentanyl a day in my neck. You know what I mean? And so Dr. B will write you, oh, okay, well, we're going to give you a 32 milligrams, right? We're going to give you the max dose that we can prescribe legally, which is four strips a day. All right, and, and get you started on that. Well, then you get to your withdrawal and you start getting sick, right? And then you start, you dose onto your medication <clears throat> and you dose and you get to it and you're like, hey, I feel good at 16 milligrams. 
I don't think I need to take the other 16 milligrams. Well, okay, let's not, let's not speak too soon. Let's see how you're doing. Take that 16 milligrams. We'll just lead with that. Ne tomorrow we'll come in. You're still doing good on your 16 milligrams the next day and so on and so forth, right? Until you feel like, okay, and then you might come back like maybe a week or two later and you'll say, hey, doc, you know how I said I was doing good on the 16 milligrams, which I, I was doing good. But what I noticed was um, halfway through my day, I was looking to take another half of a strip. So do you think instead of doing 16, I could do 20? Right. And so that because that's what happened to me. I got on to eight milligrams. I was doing great on the eight milligrams. That was just enough. Right. And then like a month um, into my treatment, I was like, you know what? I am taking a half in the middle of the day. Just like it just worked. Right. Twelve milligrams. And that's when we found my perfect dose. Um, there, my perfect dose for me was 12 milligrams because I could take my eight milligrams in the morning and my four milligrams in the afternoon. And that was perfect for me. Right. Then as I worked my recovery and I stayed sober longer. Right. And I and I um, I started like researching about Suboxone and I started like looking into why I felt certain ways and had constipation and sweating and low sex drive, which I hate that. OK. Um, I started like wanting, saying, hey, you know what, I'm, I'm ready to start tapering. And when I started tapering, I started to feel like these, these negative side effects were lifting. Okay, but like I never thought about tapering, you guys, until I had literally been on MAT for three and a half, almost four years. Okay, and, and I'm not telling you that it has to take that long. I took four milligrams today. I feel okay versus eight, but it might be my you have a pent and masking it. I mean, it could be. And I'll tell you this. Um, uh, one another thing that helps me is like split dosing. So if you're a person who's prescribed eight milligrams, and you're like noticing that you feel like you need to, you don't feel withdrawal, but you just kind of feel psychologically in your mind like you need to take something in the afternoon. Like instead of going to the doctor and getting upped on your dose, take your medication, split it, take four in the morning and four in the afternoon. And it, it makes a huge difference. It helps so much. And, and I, that's helped me a lot. <coughs> but um, what was I saying? Um, oh, yeah. I started to realize that the more I tapered, the less side effects I was having and the negative side effects were like going away. But I had a sponsor. I, and listen, I did the 12 steps when I first got sober. Uh, you don't have to do them if you don't want to. But I, what I'm telling you guys is I, I got a sponsor. I had a counselor, a therapist. I worked the 12 steps and I did all these things in the first four years that I was sober. I got full custody of my son back. I got a full time job. I made a YouTube channel and built it to a successful enough point by the time I was four years sober. I was like advocating and um, running Mara meetings, medication assisted recovery meetings. I got my job working with Dr. B. And so like I worked really hard. I didn't just like say, you know what? I'm going to start tapering because I, <laughs> I know everything. Fuck no. Okay. Like I worked really, really hard. And I'm going to tell you this. I worked really, really hard, and I still fucked up my shit when I tapered, okay? So that's why I'm trying to tell you guys. Like, I don't want you to make the same mistakes I did, but I also want you to be able to hear my experience because it might be able to help you, you know? And so I waited. I tapered really, really slow, and the mistake that I made when I jumped off was I should have stuck. I should have paused and stayed where I was at longer at the end of my taper, and I would have been a lot. I would have been more successful. But anyway, um... I, and and I'll, what I will do, you guys, is I can make a video where we just talk about buprenorphine, Suboxone, and, like, getting onto Suboxone, tapering off of Suboxone, um, like, the, the negative side effects of Suboxone, um, how to combat some of those side Like, I, I need to sit down and do short 10, 15-minute videos that y'all can just, like, share and stuff. I just want y'all to understand, like, I'm not a doctor. I'm just sharing with you guys, like, what has worked for me and what I've learned by working with a doctor who prescribes meth methamphetamine. <laughs> who prescribes buprenorphine. <laughs> methamphetamine. Um, and so I just have learned so much from being there and getting to see, like, people 
get on the medication. You know what I'm saying? So like, I'll give you a, a, a case study, like a example real fast of somebody. And then we're going to go over to TikTok because we're going to go live with James. Okay. So I'm not going to say the person's name and this was a while ago, but we had a man come in and he was on tramadol and he was addicted to taking like a lot of tramadol. Like I thought he would have seizures like me, but honey, this boy could tramadol. All right. And so I was like, tramadol, man, getting on Suboxone is going to be like really strong for him, right? But he did not want to go through detox like he wanted to get on MAT, okay? And so he went through his withdrawal, which was super duper easy because it was prescription medication. So a lot of the times whenever a person is coming in and they're on pharmaceutical prescription medication that we 100% know is from the prescriber from the pharmacy, like those medications, like short opening, short acting opiates, opioids, um, they get out of their system a lot quicker than this fentanyl does. So usually from like, Anywhere from 16 to 24 hours, they get, they get to that point in their withdrawal where they're able to dose their uh, Suboxone. So he was prescribed, you know, 8 milligrams. So he was going to take 8 milligrams um, when he started his withdrawal. And we were on the phone, and I, and I was helping him, you know, get through his withdrawal and cheering him on. And that's when I said, hey, man, take your sub, cut it into four pieces, and dose that two milligrams, and then call me back you know, <clears throat> and let me know how you're feeling, and I'm here to support you if you need anything, right? Um, and he did, and and thank God, thank God that he did, because um, it was it was it was two milligrams was almost too strong for his tramadol addiction, okay? Um, and what I mean by that is was he was projectile vomiting from the buprenorphine, not precipitated withdrawal, okay? But you guys know how many of y'all have taken Suboxone when you had no opiates in your system and you've been sober for a while and you take a whole sub and it makes you really nauseous. That's what ha that's what's happening, right? And so um, thank God he eased on so that way he didn't just go full in on the eight milligrams and, and make himself sick. Because then what would have happened is he would have gotten afraid and he would have said, I don't want to do this. And he would have went out, bought more tramadol, and then we, he would have relapsed, you know? And so, but how would, a, how, and I'm not talking about, about doctors, but how would any doctor know that unless they personally take Suboxone? And so that's why I believe that it's important for doctors and Suboxone doctors to have people like us, peers like us, who can share our personal experiences and our experiences that, that we've had personally and our experiences that our friends have went through to share with them because that is going to help save people's lives, you know? Tramadol is different than uh, a regular, you know, it's not like a, I don't know, it's a scheduled drug, but it's not like, it used to not be a narcotic, you know? And so anyway, I just wanted to use that as an example of why it's important, I believe, it to, to dose up slowly instead of just being like, woohoo, eight milligrams! <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but like I said, I'm not a doctor. I'm just some girl who really likes talking about medication assisted treatment. And I've been on the medicine for seven years and it saved my life. And I am just really passionate about helping other people who are on MAT. One, not feel alone. Two, fight the stigma. Three, find resources that they can uh, get to that are close to them locally, on the phone, whatever they got to do. And I really, really, really enjoy helping people because it's my passion. You know what I mean? So I'm going to go. Y'all come with me. I'll show you my TikTok real fast so y'all can join me over there. Okay. We are going live over on my TikTok account with James. This is my TikTok account. It's discovering Nicole 7754. Okay. So bring your asses. The eyeshadow is, um, the glitter is the Danessa Myricks Chrome, Infinite Chrome Flakes, and the base eyeshadow is Cleona Cosmetics. Okay? So I help, I hope that helps out. I love you guys, okay? Um,
Good job, Tiffany. I'm proud of you, girl. Come over to TikTok. Let's go. Love y'all.